welcome to another technical episode from a very windy and sunny Abacos in the beautiful Bahamas. So today I want to talk to you about solar panels. Solar panels are a fantastic form of renewable energy for anyone on a cruising yacht or an RV. We already have two solar panels and we decided to add two more solar panels just to increase our capacity. So today I'm going to talk to you about a few things. The first thing is how we install the panels and where we install the panels. It's important to put them in the right place to catch the most sun and to install them in a way where they can be removed easily. Second point, we're going to talk to you about the equipment that we need to get the panels installed and wired in and then to get them charging the batteries effectively. And the third thing I want to discuss with you is a topic which causes all sorts of problems on the internet is do you wire them in series or in parallel? Now to some of you that's going to be what does that even mean? I will explain it to you as best I can and I will also tell you what we found to be best. We now have enough monitoring technology to be able to show you how both series and parallel wiring works and what has given us the best results. Anyway, this should hopefully be really useful for those of you who have a boat and are going to install solar panels or for those of you that intend to go off sailing at some point in the future or for those of you who've got an RV and you've just stumbled across a sailing chain and like, what is he talking about? Anyway. Hope it's going to be useful for you. Please, please feel free to subscribe. Uh, there should be a little icon in the lower right hand side of the screen. Anyway, we'll get on with this. And as I said, hope you find it useful. Leave our comments below. All our social medias down below as well. Thanks. So what you're going to need to install the panels, you need panels, you need wires, you need a charge controller to actually regulate the charge going into the batteries. Now we bought an MPPT controller. It's a fancy piece of kit that I will explain to you how it works later on. So first thing you need to do is you need to put the panels on the bimini if you're gonna put if you're gonna install them on the bimini. You need to put them in place, you need to work out where they're going to go and find a way of attaching them. Now to attach the panels to the bimini, what I didn't want to do is make any holes in the bimini. So what I've done is, I, you could buy from Sailrite or any other good marine chandlers, these little plastic, kind of like flanges, little fl plastic attachments that will go through the holes in the corner of the panels. And they lock, they lock in place. So what I did is I made, the only best way I can describe this, they're like little, ravioli made out of um, umbrella, and I stitched the plastic attachments into these ravioli and then stitched the ravioli to the bimini. So basically it means that if ever we have to change the panels because they stop working or we buy different sized panels we haven't cut any holes in our bimini. I think that's really important that you don't cut holes in your bimini for obvious reasons. So we first templated to work out the best position for these panels and the best position for the attachment points and then once we've got all that done in place we then stitched the little ravioli to the bimini put the panels on job done took about a day The wiring, we already had wiring in place, but you do need, if you're doing this for the first panels, you need the correct gauge wiring to take the current and the voltage that you intend to put through the panels. So work out what you're gonna need and buy the 
wires accordingly as well as the connectors. It, wherever you buy your solar panels from, they normally will have, uh, they will sell the wires as well, the connecting cables. MC4 cables, the waterproof connectors, are the industry standard for this sort of thing. Super cheap, Amazon or any other re online retailer will sell them for you. So the MPPT controller connected very close to the batteries. The wiring runs through from the panels to the MPPT controller and that's it. So I'm going to explain series and parallel connections to you. It's a little bit monkey proof but just bear with me. So what I need for this is a book of Renaissance painters, a multimeter, some tin foil and a packet of batteries. Now this little AAA battery is a 1.5 volt battery. So if I run a multimeter across the terminals and set the multimeter to voltage, it will read about 1.5 volts. If I set it to amps, it will give me the amperage, which is about one and a half amps, 1,500 milliamps. Now using the center sheet of this fantastic book of Renaissance art, I am lining my batteries up in series, so in a little line. This basically means that when I connect my multimeter on the positive terminal and the negative terminal of the furthermost batteries, I will get a reading which will be cumulative of voltage. So four 1.5 volt batteries will give me six volts as an output. The amperage stays the same. And as you can see, our trusty voltmeter shows six volts batteries in parallel is just that the batteries are all side by side I've got tin foil to provide a connection at both all the negative terminals and all the positive terminals and I will run the voltmeter across both the positive and the negative terminals and you will find that the voltage is identical so the voltage stays the same however the current quadruples so as you can see we have a 1.5 volt output despite the fact we're using four batteries. Now, I want to talk to you a little bit about the MPPT controller. When I first looked into what this was, I read stuff on the internet, I'm like, yeah, what? Not quite sure what that means. I will read to you from my iPad, which is connected to the interweb. It just says, a MPPT controller or maximum PowerPoint tracker is an electronic DC to DC converter that optimizes the match between the solar PV panels and the battery bank or utility grid. Yeah. There's a complex algorithm that's involved, yada yada yada, optimize, blah blah blah, yaka yak, yak. I'm going to explain it to you the way that I have learned. Your panels put out a hundred, these panels are a hundred watts. They, pro they produce about 18 voltage each at maximum and they produce five amps each. So what the MPPT controller does is it takes all this power and basically converts it into a steady stream of 12 volts to go into the battery. So it, uh, it doesn't matter what voltage you're putting in, it doesn't matter what amperage you're putting in, as discussed, if you've got your panels in series, you have a very high voltage going in, but a steady amperage. And if you've got them in parallel, you've got a steady voltage, but a high amperage. So what it does is it takes all this power and it says, well, look, I'm just going to put this in at 12 volts and give you the maximum amperage into the batteries. And that's what it does. It's just a clever box. Our controller is rated at 100 volts and 30 amps so as long as you've got less than 100 volts or 30 amps going in it's fine so basically it takes all this goodness from the sun and turns it into a 12 volt supply to go into your batteries that's it So there's an app that goes with a Victron controller that allows me to see exactly how much energy is going into our batteries so as you can see, with the panels are wired in series, you get a cumulative voltage, but the current is staying the same. The important metric here is that almost 15 amps is going into the battery and that the battery is charging at 13.4 volts. 
So our 205, 204 watts of output from the MPPT controller is producing about 14, 15 amps of electricity. Now the clever thing about this app is that it allows you to collect data historically from the solar output from your panels. Now each bar represents one day and the white areas of the bar are bulk charging and the lighter blue areas of the bars are the top up charging, the float charging. Now this graph shows the daily output from the solar panels since I arrived in the Bahamas. The first five lines correspond with the first five days that I was here when those panels were run in parallel. Subsequently, they were run in series. So if we run a median line through the output of the panels when they were run in parallel, you can see that changing them to running in series gives us about 30% more power output on a daily basis. So as you can see, installing solar panels on your Bimini, it's fairly straightforward if you do a little bit of planning, template it out well and understand the basics of how you wire them in. Now a couple of points. Firstly, um, it is widely accepted that putting them on the Bimini is not the best and most efficient way of mounting them on a boat. Ideally you need a small gap between the panel and whatever it's mounted on to let air flow, they become more efficient. That is impractical on a Bimini and better on an arch. So there are limitations and slight efficiency problems with mounting them on Biminis. Regarding the question of whether you should mount them in series or in parallel, series as you can see they're all just daisy chained together. In parallel they had four-way connectors that split off which um, were picked up on Amazon. Now the internet will tell you that solar panels are best mounted in series in areas that receive occasional shade. The panel's output drops massively if there, there is any shade that falls on the panel itself. Now on a boat with a mast it is invariable that you are going to get at some point during your day shadow falling over your over your panels whether it's from a stay whether it's from the back stay whether it's from the mast the boom something will cause shadows to fall on those panels and so we have found that mounting them on the bimini where we get shadow from partially from the mast we get the back stay that at some angles causes um shadow to fall we have found that mounting them in series does give a higher energy output and so I would suggest that you go down that route. It doesn't actually cost that much to buy the four-way connectors that you can get to, to kind of put them into parallel and so run the experiment yourself. I think those two, the two four-way connectors cost, I don't know, arbitrarily 10 or 15 bucks from Amazon. So run it both ways yourself. It is simpler to put them in series and more efficient. Anyway, I really hope you enjoyed this video. Please, please, please feel free to subscribe down below. We have a little icon in the lower right hand side corner which will show you uh, how to subscribe to our YouTube channel. We also have Facebook, we have Twitter, we have Instagram, and now of all things we have, um, what's that thing called? Snapchat. Yeah, we've got Snapchat. That's our snap code, whatever that means. But it's kind of a really nice way for you to see what we're doing behind the scenes, kind of our day-to-day -day shots and the story of how we actually run our lives. Anyway, back soon with another technical video. Hope you enjoyed this one. Bye bye.